everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica and today we are going to be doing another one of my crafting podcasts. I believe this is episode five. You guys are really enjoying these and I'm really loving the feedback you're giving. Uh, so I will probably continue to film them. I don't have quite as many works in progress this time, but I do have a lot of finished items to show you because apparently during quarantine, I've just been making, making, making and having lots of fun. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. I'm going to start off with my um, cross stitching because I actually made quite a bit of progress on this. And if you are curious, this bag is a free tutorial on my channel so you can go check it out. I think I just called it vinyl zipper pouch or something super creative I'm sure. And it literally houses all of everything that I need for my little cross stitch project that I'm working on here. So if you're new to my channel, this is actually my first cross stitch project. I have not done cross stitch in the past, um, but I do have one finished square and one that's actually coming along quite nicely. Um, so these are going to be um, squares from the Country Cottage Needleworks um, Frosty Forest collection. And this is the one that I finished. This is the one I am currently working on. So I've got quite a bit of the house done, but these are super cute. Um, so if you haven't checked them out, she also has one called Snow Village that's just absolutely adorable. So that might be my next one. Um, I can try and go through these for you really quick so you can kind of see them. Hopefully they're not too shiny because I don't want to take them all out of the packages. Um, but I think there's nine blocks total. That's the one I just showed you and then the one I'm working on. So anyways, I got these as a bundle from Fat Quarter Shop and you can buy them individually as well if you just want to do one. So here is the finished one and I may or may not have showed this last time. I honestly can't remember so I apologize. I think I finished it after um, my last crafting podcast. And then here is the next one and how far I am. As you can see, I've got quite a bit done on the house. Um, and then I did some of, I kind of started out with all of the white because the white is the hardest and in my opinion, kind of the more boring one to do. So I did a lot of the white snow. Um, there's a little snowman over here. And then I did get some of that fencing done and down here, the fencing done. And then I started on some of the stone on the house. And then as you can see over here, I got um, kind of some tree done and I always do the outline first so I don't even know if you can see it because it's white but there is an outline on this and then I moved on to the house and um, really I don't have actually a whole lot of house left before I start adding on the roof and doing some of the bricks and then up here in this kind of blank area there are some snowflakes and things like that but I'm really excited so I've got two done I originally um, have this on like a very large piece of I think this is 14 count um, gray Ada cloth. Um, I started on the one that is recommended, which I think was a 32 count Lugana or something, and I literally could not see the holes. So I had to restart it and go with this um, larger, um, what do you call it? I don't know has bigger holes, so it's easier for me to see. Um, so anyways, I was originally gonna do it as a pillow. I think at this point, I may actually cut these out and um, just hang them like on a Christmas tree or something, do them as like individual ornaments or something. I think that'd be really cute. Um, but I don't know, I haven't ruled anything out yet. So I am leaving it on this one solid sheet. It's a little bit more of a pain to cross stitch on because I have more fabric to kind of hold on to and deal with, um, but it's fine. And as you can see, I made a lot of progress on this. I've been working on it at night when we're like watching TV or something like that. And I just have to have my lights, which I've showed this before, but I use these Vivilux um, clip-on LED lights. I am considering getting one of the ones that hang around your neck because these don't always, they don't clip on my glasses perfectly and so I'm kind of adjusting them a lot. Um, you can also clip them on your shirt, I found, um, but I've heard that the ones that hang around your neck are a little bit better, so. Maybe I'll tie a string on these and hang around my neck. I don't know. Anyways, I have been working on these at night, so that does make it a little bit um, harder just to kind of deal with because I can't see very well. But when I'm working with the darker thread, it's a little bit easier. I also grabbed some of these floss flowers from Fat Quarter Shop. They're just really cute way to keep your floss. And then you can tie um, your loose one, you know, that you're working on up here on this little hole. Um, and then it's easier to get um, to your floss that you've already pulled off. So I just thought these were kind of cute. Um, I do like them, but right now I will say that the one string, like there's not really anywhere to tuck it like there is on like these little white ones. You know, they have these little um, slots up here where you can kind of tuck your loose string. This one doesn't have that. And so my strings do kind of come off and I've tried to sort of tuck it under and things like that. But anyways, they're cute. And I just got a couple of them just to put um, some of my thread on just because I thought they made it a little bit more fun. 
So that's it for a cross stitch. So moving on to knitting, I don't actually have a whole lot of things on my needles right now. It seems like I, I still have a sock, but I showed you that last time, so I'm not going to show you this time. I finished a hat last time, um, and then I am still working on this cozy winter shawl. And I think I showed it, I've already made it in this gray kind of uh, yarn, and I think I've showed this a couple times. I have made absolutely zero progress on this, but I will show it one more time just for anyone who's new. Um, and I am doing this kind of natural, this is remix yarn, and it's a natural recycled yarn, and I actually really like it. I just haven't had very much time to work on it because I've been doing a lot of sewing, which you'll see here in just a minute, um, and so I'm still really happy with it. It's nice and soft. If you're curious, I'm using this Barocco Remix um, recycled yarn, and it's got a really kind of it's got a nice texture. It's super soft, but it also feels really cottony and um, just kind of I don't know, earthy, but not like earthy in like a bitey, gritty, like wool way. Um, it just feels really natural. Um, and this one is 30% nylon, 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, and 9% linen. So um, they just take this and make it all from recycled fibers. I like the concept of that, and I really do love how it feels. So I need to get working on this. I just haven't had a whole lot of time to work on it. So I do have a new cast on to show you that I'm super excited about because for years I've been doing hats and scarves and just shawls, things that kind of don't take as much time or a little bit more instant gratification type things and I've been wanting to do a sweater forever. Um, I just haven't had the guts to do it really. And I was on a Zoom meeting, Fancy Tiger Crafts does um, Zoom meetings right now for their knit nights and I was on one and one of the ladies, uh, Jamie actually, the owner of Fancy Tiger was making this sweater. This is called Seven Sisters Top by Sloan Gilliam LaCase. I think that's how you say your last name. And as you can see, this is a nice, really simple, kind of chunky sweater. I really like the kind of loose fit of it. I love this longer um, ribbing down here. And I also like that it was short sleeves because I thought since it was gonna be my first sweater, I really felt like doing short sleeves was probably a good way to go. Plus it's summertime anyway, so I can wear it right now when I finish it. Um, but that way I wouldn't get discouraged on Sleeve Island um, and just never finish it. Um, it's also a DK weight sweater, so it's going really, really fast. Um, um, and it's using blue sky fiber, so I'll show you the yarn. So here's the yarn. It's an organic cotton by blue sky fibers. And this one is in the Dusty Miller, it looks like. And it's just a really light gray mixed with kind of a white. Um, and it just looks like it's uh, marled in there. And so it's just a really nice kind of natural look to it. So the pattern calls for five skeins, so I did get that, um, and I just ordered them online, and then Fancy Tiger Crafts does either curbside pickup or shipping, and I had them ship them to me, and I literally got them in like two days, I think. It was ridiculously fast, so super exciting. Um, and so I will show you my progress. I'm actually doing really, really good on this. So here it is. Um, as you can see, this is really nice and soft and squishy, and I love how chunky it is. Um, and because it's kind of a cotton, it doesn't feel super heavy, though, or anything to me. Um, I'm really Really loving this um, kind of longer ribbed bottom down here and then the main body is just this plain stockinette all the way up so it's going really really fast so far the pattern has been pretty easy for me to follow um, I did have to ask some questions from one of our local knit nights um, on splitting for the sleeves because I just wasn't quite sure of the terminology um, and so that's what I've done now so I've got it actually on two circulars and I need to just probably um, put the caps on this one that I'm not working on right now because um, they just slide around a lot and it kind of makes it sort of a hassle so but I have split for the sleeves not very far <laughs> but I have split for the sleeves and I'm starting to bind off stitches for those so that's kind of exciting I feel like I'm doing an okay job it's not perfect um, my bind offs on the knit side look really good but then when I go to bind off on the other side it's kind of I feel like it looks a little bit wonky but so I'm basically split for the sleeves and now I'm forming the top and I haven't read the pattern I mean I did read it all the way through but I'm not sure I fully understand it so I'm not sure if you go up and then stop I'm assuming you do and then come back up the back and then probably join at this at the shoulders maybe I don't know um, we'll kind of see how it goes but this is a bottom up sweater so I'm assuming that's kind of the construction so so anyways here it is it's making really good progress I did all of this in probably 
I want to say it's been about two weeks, I think, but I'm not working solely on it because I've been doing a lot of sewing and I'm trying to finish up a quilt that I'll show you here in a minute. Um, but honestly, I think you could, if you're like a prolific knitter, you could probably knit this up really, really fast just because of how chunky um, and squishy the yarn is. So, And this, I believe, is on... For the ribbing section, it was size 10, and then now I've moved down to the size 8 circular needles. Um, and these are my chow goo needles, um, and I just have them, like I said, I've got one pair kind of holding the side I'm not working on, and then the other pair on the side that I am working on. Um, and these definitely are my favorite needles. I love chow goos. I love this cable. It really has, like, no memory, and it's just super nice and easy to work with, and I don't feel like I'm fighting with it or anything like that. So I think for my very first sweater, I probably could not have gotten one that's any easier i mean i'm sure there's easier patterns out there but i absolutely love it and i just went ahead and used the called for yarn because i i just wanted to take away any of my um you know alterations and hopefully this guy will come out actually fitting me after all of the work so um but anyways it's really fast fun project i'm really enjoying knitting on it i have slowed down just a little bit because i was having to kind of figure out how to bind off for the sleeves and stuff but i think i've got it now so i'm excited to make some good progress on this and again, that's the Seven Sisters Top by Sloan Gillum LaCase, I think is how you say it. And I did get this off of Ravelry, so you should be able to find it there. And if you're curious, I am storing this in my um, pattern. This one is also a pattern on my YouTube channel. I think this was Erica's Craft Bucket. I put a little um, button over here, and there is a tie on this side as well, so you can tie it if you want. Um, and I have two versions of this bucket um, on my channel, so definitely head over and check it out, and I will link the video for it below. So let's go ahead and do sewing. So my first project here, and this just released, um, I wanna say a week or two ago on my YouTube channel, but this was my Quilt As You Go zipper tote, and it's just got this cute Quilt As You Go pocket on the front. I just used these cotton webbing handles, and then I did add a zipper to this one just to kind of give another zipper tutorial, and then inside I added a cute little pocket and some fun fabric. This is one of my favorite fabrics. This is called Maker by Art Gallery Fabrics. It's print inside and it's really cute. And then the other fabric I used was Wanderings. It was a mix of poppy cotton fabrics actually. I think that one on the inside is called Wanderings. And then this one on the outside is called, is this Daisy May? Yes, I believe this is Daisy May out here on the outside. All the information um, for the fabric that I used and everything is in the video um, tutorial and there's links below all of my videos with all of that information. But this project was super fun. Hopefully you guys have already seen it. And if you've had a chance to make it, make sure to tag me so I can see what you've made. Um, I wanted to just do some more fun project with these Quilt As You Go panels because they're so versatile and fun. And really you can use a Quilt As You Go panel for pretty much any pattern, any of my bag patterns and a lot of patterns out there that just call for um, flat material. You can just make your Quilt As You Go panel the same size that you need for the material. You could literally make this whole bag a Quilt As You Go bag. Um, and so it just makes it really fun. It's a great way to use up your scraps. And I think it just makes the projects just to look a little bit more unique and fun and you don't have to be super perfect. So it's really kind of um, just a nice fun sewing experience. I keep a little bucket of scraps next to my sewing machine and if they're scrap worthy for things like this I'll just toss them in there and then when I'm doing projects like this I can just pull them out and just kind of add them and just kind of have fun with it. So anyways this is a pattern that I just released about a week or two ago um, and hopefully you guys have all seen it and enjoyed it already. If you haven't I will make sure to link it below this video as well um, but you can also look at my channel it's there too. Here's one of my next finishes, and this I just wanted to do a mini of my quilt back here on the wall, as you can see. This is my Vintage Glory quilt, and it comes with you know instructions for the whole quilt, but I also thought it would be really fun to make a mini since I had a mini of my truck. And so I just added some grass to the bottom of it and then did this cute, um, what is that called? Gingham binding around it. This fabric is actually some of my Bonnie and Camille day sale fabric that I've been hoarding. And then on the back, I just did one of their basics prints, which this is like their orange peel, gray orange peel print or something like that. And that's from their basics line. So I thought it would be really cute just to make a mini of the house. Plus it's such a cute little block. And you can do that with any quilt that you have. If you like the blocks that are in the quilt, you can always just make one block as a mini and then you can hang it on your wall as decoration. And so that's what I wanted to do with this one. So this one is actually sitting right next to my truck that I showed I think in the last podcast on my wall and it, they just look really cute together just as like little minis but of course I do have the full quilt hanging on my wall right now just because it's almost July it's the middle of June while I'm filming this 
and so, so it's definitely time to bring out my patriotic quilts I also have some over here on my rack that I'll show you um, the top one is my freedom quilt the next quilt down is Somerville by Thimble Blossoms. Uh, the next one down is Laconer Stars. That's a free quilting pattern by Jara Brandvig, and it's really fun to make. And then the bottom one is my um, mix. It was a Lori Holt quilt that I did a long time ago um, from her Farm Girl Vintage Blocks, and I used the Cherry Block and her Flag Block to make that one, and that one is super cute as well. So definitely time for all the patriotic quilts to come out and start decorating my room. But the house and the truck will probably hang up all the time just because they're super cute and I love them. All right, so my next project is a finished quilt and I'm so excited to have this done. I've been showing you the barn blocks that I've been working on. They came in my sew sampler boxes. If you're unfamiliar with sew sampler, they're a monthly sewing quilting subscription box. I'll put a link for it below if you're interested, but you've probably already seen the unboxings on my channel. But anyways, in every single box, you get one card that is for a quilt block. And then at the end of 12 months, you'll have a whole stack of quilt blocks that you can put together in a sampler quilt. And this one was one from, I think it was their, I wanna say their 2018 kind of run of boxes, um, but it's their barn blocks and you can still get them on the Fat Quarter Shop website. So I have finally finished this quilt and what I'm going to do is just probably hang it up outside and insert some video in here so that you can kind of see it a little bit better. I will say that sewing with monochromatic colors wasn't quite as exciting. I'm more used to sewing with really bright colors as you can kind of see around my sewing room. And so my blocks are always really fun and colorful and that's part of the process that I really enjoy. And so sewing with just all gray, black, and white was just a little bit on the boring side as far as the sewing goes. But I'm so glad that I stuck with it because now that it's done, this is probably one of my most favorite quilts. It's super nice and neutral. It can kind of blend into whatever room. And I really like the contrast between the blacks, the whites, and the grays. I think it just makes it super, super pretty. Um, and it definitely kind of has that farmhouse vibe a little bit as well. Then on the back side of this quilt, I used um, some Ikea fabric. And yes, Ikea does sell fabric. I think they still have fabric. This was a line, I think it was called Brita or Britix or something like that. And it's basically cursive numbers just written all over it. And it's just white and black. Um, and so I thought it would fit this quilt perfectly. And I've been hoarding this fabric for kind of a while just because I didn't know what to do with it. Um, but their fabric comes in 60 inch um, uh, bolts and so it's actually really good for quilt backings. Um, it's nice and wide and So yeah, I've been hanging on to it for a while and then I just felt like it really kind of matched with this quilt really well I don't think you can still get this one, but I do think they still have other fabric lines um, available So check them out Ikea who knew they had fabric and I don't know if you'll be able to see the quilting on here or not um, I haven't washed it yet. So that always kind of helps it But as you can see hopefully I just did just a kind of smooth meander really nice big um, space I didn't quilt this very tight at all. I just wanted it to be nice and kind of loose and squishy feeling. And so I will stick this guy in the wash and then it'll come out all nice and crinkly and perfect. But um, I just quilted it myself. I pretty much always do all of my quilting. Um, I really like to do that. I'm not a master of it or anything. And I definitely don't have all the super fancy designs and things like that. Um, but I just think there's something to starting a quilt from start to finish and I don't know I just like the I mean it's handmade and it's so fun so here it is my finished barn quilt and I'm super glad that I stuck with it if you guys are sewing monochromatic quilts I definitely suggest that you just kind of stick with it it's just not as exciting to sew in my opinion um, but I think I really love the finished result so I'm glad that I stuck with it and got it finished so this guy is all done and ready for the wash so I do have two other fun things that um, I just made for videos and you should have already seen this because I'm filming on a Wednesday and I believe this already goes up to tomorrow but I did have a free tutorial on my channel Channel for these cute little buckets and these are perfect for holding fat quarters or you can keep scraps in them I like to keep projects in these knitting in these you can put cross stitch in these so this pattern is releasing tomorrow so you will see it by the time this video goes live so this particular fabric line is called cherished moments and it is by poppy cotton and it's just the cutest little floral line, nice soft colors. So, and then in this one, I also have fat quarters in here as well. So this side is the cherished moment side, and then this side is my Daisy May side. Um, but this one is super cute. It's also a pattern. If you prefer PDF patterns, I have them in my shop as well. Um, so you can make these cute little nine patches on the side and then turn it into this adorable bucket. And I also threw some handles on here just because I thought that made it a little bit more functional. I can just grab these and put them all over. Um, and I have one that actually has rolled up fat quarters or rolled up 
layer cakes in it. And then I also use these for my quilt projects. So I'll stick the pattern and all of my scraps and everything like that in here. And then that way when I'm working on a project, I can just keep everything in one place. It stays kind of nice and neat and tidy on my sewing table so it's not, you know, making a mess everywhere if I have another project that I have to work on. So super cute, fun. This is probably one of my more favorite projects that I've done recently and I want to make about a thousand more. So I think that's it for all of my sewing. Let's go ahead and move on to spinning because I have been doing a little bit of spinning. So here is one that I just recently finally got on my Nitty Naughty. I actually showed this to you on the um, bobbin last time. This is called Romantics by Wound Up Fiber Arts. And it kind of just, I like to let them sit on the bobbin just so they can kind of rest before I put it on. And this is just a makeshift Nitty Naughty. My husband made it for me out of PVC piping. And then this side doesn't have a little cap on it so you can slide the yarn off. And I'm just gonna let this sit for probably a day or two and then I'll slide it off and put it in the wash slap it around a little bit outside to get all the kinks out of it and then let it dry and skein it up and it'll be good to go. But you have already seen this one. I just wanted to show it to you on the Nitty Naughty because I always think it has a little bit of a different perspective. I really like the soft colors of this one. My next spin, and I actually just started this last night, but this is called Nest Egg by Wound Up Fiber Arts. This one is 90% superwash, 10% nylon, and it's her super sock fiber. And you can just check out her website. She's always got beautiful things. And she also sells her hand spun yarn. And she um, is always knitting up socks with it. And it's just absolutely beautiful. But here you can see the fiber. So I've already split this in half. And how I split my fiber is I take the entire roll. Um, I divide it in half um, lengthwise. And then I sit there and strip it out into these little what I like to call nests and then these guys are ready to go and spin and I can just grab one and just keep going and if it looks soft and fluffy in the video it's because it absolutely is soft and fluffy so soft it's like it's, it's like spinning a cloud and this one's actually been really enjoyable to spin and very easy as well here is the um, other half of it and so I'll just leave this until I'm ready to spin it and I haven't decided yet if I'm going to break that one into these little bundles or not or if I'm just going to spin it end to end. Um, sometimes you get kind of a cool fractal um, kind of barber pulling if you do it this way. So if you take one half and split it into these tiny little nests and then take the other half and just spin the whole thing um, solid then you'll get kind of a cool mix. Um, it kind of has that marled look to it. So anyways here is the original fiber and it's super pretty and super soft and fluffy and I love it. So here it is on the bobbin and it's just so beautiful and soft and I'm really really loving the colors coming out. Hopefully I can kind of keep this look going uh, when I apply it together. It's possible that I'm going to apply it with just a white mercerized cotton just so I can kind of keep this really subtle um, color but I haven't 100% decided yet but it's really beautiful and as you can kind of see here's the fiber and then here's the spin. And I am spinning this on my Spin-A-Lotion Echo Wheel, which is my all-time favorite wheel. I absolutely love it. It's sitting right behind me over here um, on the floor, and it's really good for beginners in my opinion. I do have a review of it on my channel as well. Um, I have an Echo and a King Bee on my channel, so you can kind of see both of them. This is really my favorite wheel. It's light, it's portable, it's super easy, and in my opinion, it's really beginner friendly. It has a hook orifice on it, which makes it, I think, a little bit easier to use than the um, tube orifices because you have to, if you break your yarn, you can just put it right back on without kind of taking everything apart and re-threading the um, spinning wheel. So anyways, just my personal opinion, but here is my current spin. I'm really loving it and I'm excited to see how this one turns out. I do not have any plans for this yarn yet. Um, I'm probably just going to kind of see how it turns out. Right now it's probably looking like it's going to be about a DK weight. Um, I'm kind of letting it sort of become what it wants instead of trying so hard to make it be what I want it to be. Um, so we'll see how it turns out when it's all done and then I'll decide what I'm going to make from there. But anyways, super, super pretty. I don't know if she still has this in her shop or not, but she always lists beautiful fiber regularly. She does regular shop updates and um, I mean, it's all gorgeous. I could just order her whole shop and be happy. So, so that's it for my spinning. Let's move into acquisitions. I do have a couple things that kind of go with along with this and some fun fabric to show. 
So one of my first acquisitions I want to share because it kind of goes with my spinning that I just showed you. But I did finally break down and purchase um, this little um, thread guide or wrap guide. Um, this is for spinning. You can kind of put your thread on here and it will help you determine what weight your finished spin is. Or you can also do it in the middle so you can kind of see where you're going to go. You can also use it um, to kind of make sure that you're staying on gauge while you're spinning so that you're being more consistent and whatnot. Um, I haven't done it quite as much that way. I kind of just use it afterward to see what my finished product is, but I probably should be a little bit more accurate and test it while I'm going so I can be, so I can be more accurate, but I don't know. Spinning is just kind of relaxing to me. And so I'm not always spinning specifically for a project. If I was, I'd probably use it as I was going, but, um, I like to just kind of have fun and wing it. So that's just me, but it is nice to be able to tell what my finished product is when I'm done. And then the other thing I picked up is this mercerized cotton. And this probably doesn't look very exciting. It's just a roll of this cotton. This is perfect for a couple of things. One, you can use it to, um, as your, um, warp for your weaving looms, but I've also done a couple of yarn project where I've actually plied my, um, my yarn with this and it actually gives it a really cool look. This is super strong. So if your yarn is maybe a little underspun or anything like that, this will add a little bit of strength to it. Um, it also can kind of just mute out some colors. If you've got really super colorful yarn and you spin it with this, it just, it's almost like, um, if you're knitting with mohair or something, it kind of takes on a little bit of the hue of whatever, um, you're plying it with. And so it can kind of tone it down or brighten it up depending on which kind you use. So I just have this white here. I like to use it for warps, like I said, on my, um, weaving loom, but it's also really good to ply with your yarn as well. So I have these two kind of spinning acquisitions. The other thing I purchased, and I apologize if this is a duplicate, I can't remember if I showed this last time, but I definitely wanted to make sure that you guys saw it. This one is called Sea Creature by Legacy Fiber Arts, and this is their sock kit, and it's their steel toes. It's four ply fingering weight. It's about 463 yards or 100 grams for the big skein, and then about two, uh, 20 grams for the mini, and it's just so pretty. And if you go check out the Legacy Fiber Arts um, Instagram or website, um, you can kind of see, and they have a podcast as well. I'm sure you probably are all already know about them, but Sue is knitting up, I think socks in this and the colorway just got me right away. It's so fun and pretty and I just love it. So I haven't decided what I'm going to be making with this yet. Um, I don't know, maybe socks, but as you guys know from probably previous podcasts, I'm not a huge sock knitter. So it's possible I'm going to hold this double and do a hat and then do this as the brim. And if there's any leftover, maybe a little palm or something. Um, but Socks would be also really cute with this. So anyways, I just couldn't pass up this colorway. It's just so pretty and fun. And I, this might be like one of my favorite colorways. Um, and if you see the socks that Sue is knitting up in this, I think you'll agree that this color is just awesome. So that's my yarny acquisition. And then I do have two fun fabric bundles that I got hold of. Um, I'm super excited about. So this first one I actually talked about in my last podcast. And some of you said that you saw it on Etsy. So I of course immediately went on there to check it out, but this is called sugar Creek by Corey Yoder. And I had made some bags in it. Um, and you'll see some of my, I think, what bag did I make? Maybe it was one of my squishy bags. I can't remember, um, but I made it out of this and all I had was little mini charm packs of so the little two and a half by two and a half inch squares. And um, I was really bummed out and I wanted more because I would love to do a whole kind of summer quilt with this. And so I did find this fat ate the bundle. So I got a hold of that, which I'm super excited about. And then to match with that, I did get this blueprint for the backing. So I got about, I think I got four or five yards of that. Whenever I'm buying backing fabric, I usually do four to five yards. Um, it's usually a pretty good size. If you have to, you could put a little border around it or maybe a little strip in the middle to make it bigger, but I usually find that that's enough. And then I did this really fun gray print for the binding color. So I have all of that. And then because she just released this new line and it just also looked so fun, I couldn't resist. And I think it was from the same seller on Etsy, um, but I did get her new one. This is Canning Day. Yes, Canning Day, also by Corey Yoder. And it's just super fun and colorful print. Um, and if you check out her website or her Instagram, you can see tons of fun project ideas using her fabric, of course. Uh, she's a great designer. She has lots of quilt patterns and um, projects. And then of course her fabric is just so fun and pretty. So I think that's it for all of my projects and acquisitions. I hope you enjoyed that. If you've stuck around this long, I do have a fun giveaway for you guys. 
This mat is 12 by 18 and it's great for pressing your quilt blocks or any kind of pressing that you're gonna be doing because your iron kind of heats it from the top and then the wool absorbs that and reflects it back up onto your project so you get really nice crisp blocks that way. It also comes with this cute little notions pouch and then inside it has a few little fun things in here. There's some pins and a little tape measure and I thought there were scissors in here. Is there scissors? Yes, there's a little pocket on the front with some scissors. So it also comes with this cute notions pouch with a few fun little accessories inside it as well. So one winner will receive this 12 by 18 wool pressing mat along with this cute little notions pouch. This giveaway is sponsored by The Complete Boutique and I will put a link to their website where you can get these below as well. So for the giveaway, I think it would be fun to see what your guys' top crafting projects are. So let me know in the comments below what your all time favorite craft is. Do you prefer knitting or clothing sewing or um, I don't know, quilting or spinning or who knows, whatever. Just leave it in the comments below. If you can't pick one like me, as you can see from my craft podcast, I do all kinds of things. I love learning new things. Put that in the comments below too, that will count. And then I will announce the winner on my next craft podcast and then you'll get the sewing mat and the little notions bag um, as your gift. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep doing them for you. In the meantime, I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy and I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining me. It really means a lot to us. We, I read all of the comments and really enjoy all your guys' feedback um, from these videos. So thanks so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you next time. I don't have quite as many uh, finished... Ah. What should we do next? It's hard to hold this up. And if you're curious, I'm storing this in my craft bucket. I think I called this Erica's craft bucket. I don't know. Oh, all of my chair. Okay. Oh, what should we do next? Sewing? Let's do sewing. I can like hear you, Jason. Who's it by? Who's it by? It's by, sorry, fiber. So I think that's it for all of my project and accident. Oh, cute little notions pouch with a pouch with a cut. So what can we do for the giveaway? I can't hold it all. I want to show it all.